And we have just seen that the holding times in state uh, J have exponential distributions, but uh, we didn't uh, derive the parameter of the exponential random variable. Let's say in state J, uh, the, the rate of the parameter, or let's say the rate parameter of the exponential distribution of the holding time is alpha sub J. That means the complementary CDF of T sub J is equal to E to the power minus alpha J times T, because this is the CDF of, well, complementary CDF of the exponential distribution. But as, as we have just derived, this conditional distribution equals P sub J, J of T. And here I'm going to put zero for tau. Okay, that means, well, uh, probability of T sub J being greater than uh, T given that it is greater than T, which is one, right? Because that is simply probability of A given A for any event A. So that should be equal to one. Um, therefore, um, this probability equals just uh, the probability that the, 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 the holding time exceeds T, okay? And therefore that as we have established here is equal to E to the power minus alpha J times T. And we have seen that that equals P sub J J T. And if you take the derivative of both sides, okay? And evaluate at zero. If you take the derivative of this with respect to T, you would get minus alpha J times e to the power minus alpha j t and evaluate at uh, zero, t equals zero, what you get is alpha j, um, well, sorry, minus alpha j. And on the right-hand side, if you take the derivative of that, pjj, evaluate at zero, by definition, well, this is the component of the matrix Q at position jj. This is because the definition of matrix Q is the derivative of matrix P evaluated zero. Therefore, if you take the derivative of um, this component PJJ and evaluate that derivative at time T equals zero, what you should get is the component of Q at that location, Q sub, J, uh, Q sub JJ. So here I have minus alpha sub J equals Q sub JJ, therefore, Alpha, J, uh, alpha sub j equals minus q sub j j. Okay, so what does this say? This says that the holding time in state j for a continuous time Markov chain is an exponential distribution with the rate parameter equal to minus q j j. Okay, remember q j j, that's, an, uh, that's a component on the diagonal in q that should be negative. So minus qjj is positive as expected because it's the rate parameter of an exponential distribution. So this is an exponential distribution and the mean holding time in state j should be one over the rate parameter. So that is equal to minus one over q sub jj. Okay, next we look at the transition probabilities um, in the sense that uh, you know a transition has occurred and we are after the probability that uh, we, we transition into a specific state. Okay, consider this probability. X of t equals i is known and i different than j is known. Given these two, the probability that X of t plus h is equal to j. So what does this mean? Um, when h is small, let's, let's say h is small, this means you make a transition within the interval from t to t plus h, okay? And you exit state i and you enter state j. So we define this as v sub ij of h. If you take the limit of this as h decreases to zero, 
then this gives us the probability that given the continuous time Markov chain exit state I, it enters J. Okay, this is different than P sub IJ. Why? Because P sub IJ defines a probability of starting from I and ending up in state number J within that time, let's say T. Vij H, on the other hand, it signifies the probability that given within this amount of time H, the Markov chain makes a transition. You know this, it makes a transition. This gives you the probability that that transition is into state J. So there is a distinction between V sub IJ and P sub IJ. Okay, so if you write uh, V sub IJ in using conditional probabilities, that's equal to, well, we have the definition here. And that's equal to, if you just apply the definition of conditional probability, that is uh, the probability of X of T plus H equals J and X of T equals I and X of T plus H is not I divided by the probability of the condition, condition being here. So that is X of T equals I and X of T plus H does not equal I, okay? Now at this point, um, you see this term and this term, these events are common on, on both the numerator and the denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to condition on this information. So that will be X of T plus H equals J, X of T plus H does not equal I, given X of T is equal to I times the probability that X of T equals I. Okay, so I've just used Bayes rule or the definition of conditional probability. And on the uh, denominator, I have probability of X of T plus H doesn't equal I given X of T equals I times the probability of the condition, which is X of T equals I. Well, of course, this and this will cancel out. So what I, what I will have uh, at the numerator is I make a transition from I, I start from I into J, okay? And explicitly I know that I and J are different so that I can write this probability because when they are equal, uh, that's a different story. And here in the denominator, I have probability of X of T plus H is not equal to I given x of t is equal to i. So this is the probability of making a transition. It doesn't specify the ending state, the next state, but it just says you will make a transition. You will exit the state for sure within time h. So that happens with probability one minus p sub i i h because by definition, p sub i i is the probability that you do not leave state i, okay? So this is equal to V sub I J H. And again, we would like to take the limit of this as H goes to zero. And if you divide both the numerator and the denominator by H and take the limit as H goes to zero on the numerator, you get Q sub I J by definition. Again, by definition in the denominator, you have minus Q sub I I. And this, this limit we define as V sub IJ. As you see, this does not depend on H because we have taken the limit, okay? So what does this mean? So we have derived something, what does, what does this, this mean? Recall our definition here, V sub IJ of H, um, the probability of entering into state J where J is different than I Given that I was just in state I and left it, okay? That is the probability Vij. So the probability that the Markov chain transits into state J, transits into J upon exiting I, okay? This is what we have derived. That is equal to the ratio of the transition rate from I to J to the total transition rate out of I. So if I have a state 
i and i know that at a specific time it makes a transition out of state i in markov chain okay so let's say it goes to three different states let's say the rate from i to state one state two and state three are let's say qi1 qi2 and qi3 now what this derivation says is the probability that when you exit state i the probability that you go to state one is q sub i1 divided by q sub i1 plus q sub i2 plus q sub i3 and of course the probability that given you exit state i the probability that you go into state two is equal to q sub i2 divided by the sum of all three rates and similarly given you exit state i the probability that you enter state three is equal to q sub i3 divided by the sum of all these three 